Hello, wonderful person. Hi. I'm Miha. I'm Sylvia. And this is our watermelon update video where we're going to be eating our favorite breakfast in the world, watermelon. And we'll share an update about what we've been up to in the last two years because actually it's been around two years since we published last video on this channel so That's a, long time. a lot of things have been happening we have a long list <laughs> <laughs> but we'll try to keep it entertaining um, and we'll bring you up to speed so let's kick it off so what have we been doing for these past two years i think the main thing as usual was just personal development. We've been working on ourselves, trying to be better people, uh, be kinder, be more productive, be um, no more, and also help others. And this is a big part of what we've been doing actually. So we have a blog called Journal Smarter. We'll link to it below so you can check it out. And it's very much about using your journal. So your paper journal to become the best version of yourself or to, you know, that can mean anything you want. That can mean, you know, spirituality, productivity, health, uh, accessing your subconscious, creativity. And yeah, we've been writing articles there. We've been uh, developing lots of journaling tools for people to use. And we've been what have we been doing? We've been doing some facilitated courses. This is something new that we hadn't tried bef before last time we spoke to you. And this is something that we absolutely love. So we have these courses where we help people use their journals and um, do cool stuff that allows them to be whoever they want to be and right now we're working on our most popular course. We're going to be launching it for the third time it's called a minimalist journaling system and yeah we absolutely love it and people have been really enjoying it as well so that's something exciting that's on the near future horizon for mm. us right now another big thing was well working on relationships this channel actually started as as that as as channel about relationships and um that mostly involved working on our relationship between the two of us um, but also relationship with our families um, this is something that's been quite present and we've been doing lots of work there um, and also relationships with our friends um, I'm not going to go very much into detail because I think each of those topics is just huge and we, we have a lot to share on each of those but that will just give you kind of key insights or key practices that we found that really made a big difference for us. So when it comes to our relationship, I think authentic relating was a big one. We've heard of that before. Um, but kind of recently we went to a workshop and it was not about authentic relating, but part, as a part of it, there was some authentic relating also. Um, and we loved it. Um, and we kind of picked it up and then we ended up playing one of the authentic relating games for like four hours or something. It was crazy. And then we did it a few times and every time it felt like it really brought us much closer together. Um, and like it unlocked something that we struggled to express before or connect in that way. So it was really something magical and very strong and very bonding. Um, I felt some resistance towards it. I think, you know, to be in the present moment together with you in this very vulnerable space, but but it was this good kind of resistance. And as I was going through it and Silvia was helping me to kind of unpick it, yeah, we discovered like another layer of our relationship that we were not really aware of that much before. So I think it was really something special and and this is definitely something I'd like to explore more with you. Another thing is relationship retrospective. So just creating space where we come together to reflect on our relationship and just review what's been happening, what was good, what's going well, uh, what is not going so well, what would we like to focus on for the next period of time. 
Um, and we've been experimenting with this for some time. Um, I think we still haven't found like ideal format for it. Um, so what usually happens is we, we try a new format and we keep it up for a bit and then we kind of drop it and then we realize, hey, we, we were doing this, why are we not doing it again? Let's start again and we start again. So I think it's something that we, we know it's very important and we like it and we see the benefits so we keep coming back to it even if it somehow falls for through the cracks sometimes. Um, but I think we still haven't found like the, the perfect format, mm -hmm. but I think it's something we will continue exploring for sure. Um, when it comes to relationships with our families, we travel quite a lot, so we don't get to spend that much time with them. So what we usually do when we, when we come to visit, we stay for a bit longer. So it's usually around a few weeks, even a month, and we live together with our families, which brings an opportunity to well deepen those relationships and explore them and as you might have experienced family relationships are one of the hardest relationships there are just so many deeply rooted patterns and just things from the past and yeah it's just tricky um, so one thing that we found that really works and makes all the difference is to create intentional dates dates where we go on one-on-one -on -one dates with one of our family members. So for example, when I go, go home, I, I schedule, when I arrive, I schedule a day when I, when I go for a date with my mom and then another day for my dad and another day for my sister. Um, and this has been incredible um, because it creates this intentional space where it's just kind of easier to go deeper on one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, in a kind of when the whole family is together we found that sometimes we just default to like this regular activities when you are together but sometimes not really like chatting about kind of nothing around dinner or well we don't really watch TV in my home but just kind of you know being in one space yeah, but because not... there's kind of this group energy that's already yeah. established and it's harder to change exactly them. exactly and just because it's so so deeply rooted those things that it's just so hard so doing it one-on-one -on -one, it makes a big difference. And yeah, for example, with my mom, I had just like such big breakthroughs and with my sister as well, and with my father as well. Um, so yeah, this felt like the most important practice we did. Um, and when it comes to friendships, well, we tr again, we travel and lots of our friends travel. So most of our friendships are remote. Um, and there was a period when we kind of struggled to stay in touch m meaningfully um, and then few, we started to, to shift how we approach this whole, um, whole thing. So one thing that really was a big insight is to find a rhythm for every relationship that really works. So for example, there are friends with whom I meet meet for a call um, every month and then when the, during the call we already arrange the next date in around a month. Uh, there are other relationships that I meet with those people maybe like twice a year so every six months roughly and that doesn't mean that those relationships are not as valuable as the ones that I meet more often it's just sometimes there needs to be a different amount of time that needs to pass so we have interesting enough conversation or like deep enough insights to explore together it's just different kind of friendship um, and I think they're they're equally valuable they just bring up different things and they give different opportunities also like this connection points and you can reflect oh where have I been half a year ago or three months ago um, so this is something that that started to really work uh, and also help us maintain those relationships and not let them fall through the cracks. Like, you know, we actually schedule the next next call. So we know it's there. And of course, sometimes we have to reschedule whatever closer to the date because it's maybe hard to plan six months in advance. But at least we know this call will happen. So it's not like it's just going to disappear from our awareness. And another thing is 
switching to voice only calls because our work is just so much of it happens on screen yeah before we're having zoom calls yeah uh, with people so having it via voice is just so much nicer we don't need to look at the computer and we can also go for a walk mm -hmm. this is something we love doing just go for a walk with our friends while being on a call it's really quite cool yeah i really like that and i guess now that we're talking about relationships, something else that we have really leveled up in our lives was the sense of community. Mm -hmm. So I feel like now is the first time that I that I think I'm, I'm intentionally building a community of people around me. So part of it is online, as Miho was saying, a lot of our friends are in some other places in the world. So we've been using this framework uh, by Rich Bartlett called Micro Solidarity, which is very much about the power of doing things in small groups. And we have been yeah, ex experimenting with this. So we have regular calls with what we call crews, with friends of ours. And in each group, we do different things that can be just connecting with each other emotionally, talking about different topics, um, eventually doing things together. We're really enjoying this learning by doing idea. And this feels really powerful because again, it's this rhythm. We have these meetings regularly and it feels like a community is forming. Apart from that, we've also joined in Spiral, which is this amazing network of people who are supporting each other and doing work that matters. And we have been learning so much from it and connecting with amazing people from there that are really inspiring. We'll leave a link down below as well so you can check it out. And I think a, something that's really new for us is that finally, after so long, we have been staying in one place for a longer period of time. It's been more than half a year now, I think. That we are in Pico, which is an island in the Açores, this Portuguese archipelago in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And because we are here, it's we can finally start building community face to face with people that are in in the same space that we are, and this feels mm. really great. And we have been also having rhythms. Yeah, rhythms ha are something very important in our life right now. So we have a regular circle with, with our friends. Then I have a women's circle that I'm a part of as well. And we are meeting intentionally and doing really cool activities with, with people from here. And we're starting to work on some really interesting projects to change the island and there's a lot of people here that we feel really inspired by who are doing a lot of cool stuff like um, syntropic agriculture and also some version of micro solidarity uh, you know bringing the people from the island and expats and travelers together and and doing activities um, doing lots of cultural stuff and 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 people are just so open-minded and open-hearted here at least the people that we're getting in touch with and it it really feels nice to have this sense of community mm -hmm. on so many different levels mm -hmm. yeah it's quite an amazing place and we came here well it's been quite a journey we've been traveling when for quite a long time no I mean long time three years maybe mm -hmm. um, and last video we recorded for this channel was in Edinburgh and since then we've been in Europe in different places uh, with some we really fell in love for example Wales we've been in this incredible project which is a pirate ship in a in a chapel in an old chapel the project is called the Astro Ship we'll link to everything we're talking about there's gonna be a huge yeah. like, list of links below um, so and yeah we fell in love with Wales it's such a beautiful mm. place so magical mm. we also been to France in, in the Alps we, we stayed in Lovitel Lodge with, with Caroline who runs the place and we helped her um, develop the space um, and it's, it's a guest house but also a space for retreats it's quite magical also in the middle of the mountains just like there <laughs> in nature 
Uh, but yeah, there were many, many more places. We visited our families and kind of moved around quite a lot. I think one of the biggest hacks also we found was house sitting. This is really something <laughs> that I think we were subconsciously craving and then we, we realized that this is really perfect because the, the idea is that, well, there's people who have animals and for some reason they need to travel, but they can't take animals with them. So um, they just need someone to take care of the animals and that's where we come in. So we go there, stay in their house and take care of the animals. And this was so much fun, such a great experience. We've been missing before this animal presence. And that gave us opportunity to bring more of that energy in our life. And we took care of dogs, cats, but also snakes, guinea pigs, rats. <laughs> it was amazing, a big variety. Um, and yeah, like I still miss some of those animals like actively, mm -hmm. you know, they're really on on my awareness in my heart. It's it's quite quite something, quite something special. So if you like animals and if you like traveling, we highly recommend trying house sitting. It's it's incredible. It's an incredible way uh, of yeah of connecting with animals and just creating win win where and everyone finding the animal benefits. within yourself. <laughs> yes, <laughs> also Sylvia was talking like a little puppy playing with with, with dogs. I miss them. Um, yeah, and. Our recent home is Pico, where we came with just for two months, really. That was kind of our, you know, our standard length of staying in a place. But then upon arriving, maybe like three days later, we decided to actually stay for three months just because we, we had an opportunity and we liked it a lot. And then there was a lockdown because of COVID, so we couldn't leave the island and we ended up staying longer and as we were staying we were realizing wow this place is just perfect for what we want right now there is incredible nature there's the mountain there's the ocean forests hills it's just so beautiful so stunning um there's amazing people that we really connect with and really vibe with and it feels even if it's a small space and it's a small community, it feels like it's quite abundant mm. with possibilities. Like recently, now I, I started tap dancing class. Like, you know, you have this kind of opportunity. It's something I would never expect to exist in a small island. Mm. Um, and yeah, we just like living here. It feels like very peaceful and calm and it's definitely something we we resonate with right yeah. now so we're not sure if we're gonna stay here for like you know for life somehow it doesn't feel like it at least for me mm -hmm. but i can imagine us staying here for a few years and we still want to travel but spend a few months in a year traveling but then come back here and operate from here um, and grow things here um, in terms of community but also in terms of our food because climate here is magical you can grow anything from apples to mangoes and bananas which so. is actually quite rare it's apparently yeah. in, like between mediterranean and tropical so you can have like these different yeah. kinds of stuff anyway what have we been doing apart from that well writing has been a big part of our work uh, we've been writing for a blog, we've also been doing freelance freelance writing, um, we've been writing for our courses as well, um, we've been journaling a lot, um, we've also been coaching, so we have coached um, individuals who simply want to you know, do cool things in their life and who want to become healthier or happier or achieve a certain goal. We've also done business coaching for for communities, actually, when we were in France, when we were in Wales, uh, when we were in Japan. We we're helping people who are doing really cool things and, and changing the world. And it's such an honor to, to do that work and helping them achieve those goals and, and make a difference. We've also been doing relationship coaching, as you probably know from before, maybe, not sure. Um, and we started a podcast, uh, which we will also include a link to it 
and yeah it's not like we have a, a rhythm for that it's like we just post there whenever we feel like it and it's basically mm. the two of us having conversations about things that we feel interested in things that happen in our lives things that people ask us about sometimes people have a question and we just we just answer it in a podcast um, yeah and that's fun we also started public journals so right now I am writing on my paper journal of course but then I have a digital version of my journal where I publish one entry a day and the concept of it is that I am just practicing being vulnerable in public as a way to develop myself, become stronger, learn things about myself that I don't just learn when I write for myself. It's kind of special to have someone read those things that are so intimate. Yeah, and I talk about whatever's going on in my life at the moment, things that I want to think about, things that feel important, uh, setting goals, sometimes just like creative writing and poetry. And yeah, I'm, I've been publishing one entry a day for a bit over two months now. Which is actually great for my writing consistency because I think it's the longest streak of days that I've been writing every day, even though I do writing as a main occupation. Um, so this is great. I love it. And you want to say a little bit about your journal? Yeah, for me, it's about getting ideas that I have. I, I always have this problem that too many ideas in my head, but I can't get them to exist you know i can't manifest them or not all of them so th my digital journal is for that purpose i try to verbalize ideas and like put them in tangible capsules you know little pieces of content and for me that's already enough because they be become building blocks for me to then create something bigger out of them or just leave them as small ideas um, it's also a way for me to transpose ideas from my paper journal where most of my creative process happens to a digital form um, and I've been missing this transition I kind of struggled with getting ideas from the pages of my journal and making yeah, them into articles or into something else so that really helps me with that so yeah, Sylvia wrote an article actually about her experience so we'll also put a link to that yeah i think it's quite my quite experience with online journaling so we'll, we'll share that with you as well mm. so what about the future or specifically future of hannibal well we realized that we kind of miss making videos for this channel it's been a long time we really enjoyed it before, but then we kind of shifted our focus. So I think we're going to be somehow coming back to it. I think we don't want to commit to any rhythm. It's going to be more spontaneous, kind of like with our podcast. This seems to be working quite well. Yeah. Um, but in the same time, we'd like to do that more. We feel like there's quite a lot of things you would like to share. Um, I think one thing that we need to figure out, which is something we're in the process of, but it's, it's quite confusing for us, um, is to find the right relationship between Journal Smarter and Honeyboom and how we kind of organize it more from a business point of view um, and just to keep it all coherent and make it also simple for us to navigate what content goes where and how we all co connect all of this because it's kind of all relative well it's about personal development in just different areas of it so this is something we're right now exploring and we're finding ways how to how to do that so hopefully we'll have it figured out soon and yeah so that's the intention let's see what happens and for now we are going to, I guess, leave you and we're going to proceed with our day of work. Mm -hmm. Right now we're working on 
yeah, we're quite busy with the launch of the minimalist journaling system online course because we're going to launch it next week. Um, Still and some work to do on that. <laughs> and there's a lot of work to do, but it's exciting work. And Nihal just came back from his holiday, so um, very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back to work. Um, but it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess this is it. Do you have anything else to add? Mm. The watermelon is delicious. It's really good. I really enjoy it. Mm. Highly recommend. Well, thank you for watching and thank you for being here. And thank you for being. <laughs> and have a wonderful day. Bye. See you later.